pizza. They were in here at our very last meeting. Our food inspector, Joe Walsh, Joe Murphy was down there in, I believe in April or May, a couple times, looking is. for log inspections for the grease interceptor. Um, he couldn't find any. He issued two tickets, one for not having the log and not being able to present it. It's a violation of the fog ordinance and I believe under record keeping 9A and 9B. Um, the what owner. Happened? We were in before and you were going to go. We went down and the. See if the record was there on the wall. And the record's on the wall. The record indicates that it was pumped on 11 26 19. So November 26th of this year. We have no record that it was maintained prior to that. So it was after the fact. So from the, the violation. 19, it was only it was Four days, days after the. Did, did, was he able to show you the contract? Where, where he's, he's right, Joe, Joe's oh, right, oh, yeah. Mark's right here. Yeah, so was that Matt, all right. established? Yeah, yeah. that's what it's all This is Joe Murphy. Murphy. We don't have a copy. I don't have a copy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one, one sec. Do you want to? I'd just look? like to give you a little timeline on this. Okay. Because there are some important dates, and it was correct, it does have that. But uh, back in. Um, July 16th of this year, the sewer manager contacted us, advising that there was a blockage not too far from Crust Pizza on Ford Place, just up from Old uh, Country Way. At that time, they determined that there was a lot of cloth, small cloths, blocking the, the sewer, as well as a buildup of fat, oil, and grease. They call it fog. They asked us to give priority attention to Crust Pizza to another pizza place, Milano's, right up the street that I just over, and to the nursing home. So I went to all three of them. And uh, it was on July 18th, two days later, that I conducted the food inspection at Crust Pizza, and, and the owner, Matt, was there. And I asked to have a copy of the pump-up records. I wanted a copy of the billing receipts, if he did not have them, and or a copy of the contract. He told me he has another restaurant in Plymouth where he has all these records down there. And went so far as the pump-up records it's a, it's itself, I find that highly impractical because the way it works is the driver comes to your establishment, runs his vacuum-type hose into your pump-out, they post the pump-out log on the wall, they sign it, date it, and put down all the other information. As to the billing of the contract, it could have been down there. So I asked him, in light of the, the uh, sewer backup just a uh, couple of days earlier, which he and I discussed at length, he said he would bring them back to make them available for the next inspection. So the next inspection I went in was on November 18th, and we went through the whole thing all over again. He told me again, he has the contract with Wind River, it's pumped out regularly, his Plymouth store is pumped out regularly, is all the receipts and everything else, again, down in Plymouth. Uh, I gave him one more chance, if you want to call it that. And I'll pass this to you. This is what he sent back to me. <coughs> and I will discuss that briefly, <coughs> because when he sent that document back to me, that A is not a contract, B it's not a bill, it's not an invoice, it's not a record of pump -up. What it is, is the proposed contract that Wind River sent to them back on May 1st, 2018. It is not signed. So when that sent that to me via email, I immediately called Wind River and spoke to a gentleman in their department, Steve. And Steve told me a couple of things. Number one, Crust Pizza or Reba Pizza in Situate has never had a contract with Wind River. They've never been pumped out by Wind River. Number two, although it's not totally relative to Situate, they said uh, this restaurant in Plymouth does not have a contract with Wind River, does not have, and they've never been pumped, they've never pumped them out. Despite it, at least three times, the owner telling me they pumped them out over and over. So with that in mind, I drove over to Crust. Matt was there. 
called Wind River. I got the same person I talked to on the line, and we went over all this business again of no contract, no pump out, no billing at either restaurant. So in my, I've got my smartphone here with the exact text if you need all the details. <clears throat> but that is what he sent to me, uh, trying to portray that as the whole thing with the, with the pump out for the press. So that's, the, that's kind of a, a brief overview. But I will also tell you that later that same day, in a follow-up part of that text, <coughs> This is on the 21st. This is three hours after I've been at Crust talking to him. This text to me, and I'll pass this up here if you'd like to see it. The Wind River contract is being sent over now. This is my third visit to the store, having been told three times that they pumped him out, he has a contract, and they have a log. And there it is right there. You can't take a peek at it. So, I wrote up a little report after that. I gave it to the director, and um, it outlined just what I told you here. And I know he was subsequently written up for uh, the two violations, the regulations. So on December um, 12th, uh, the director asked me to accompany him back down the crust again to see if we could kind of get this thing resolved. So Drew very graciously said to him, if you can show me a pump-up contract before the dates that I just referenced here, I will rip up and tear away your fine because you, you were then in compliance and he who didn't have it or I didn't have it or we couldn't get it. Well, that never happened. He showed me that day and Drew was with me. He had a pump out log in the back room, which was dated 11 26. 26, which is five days after all this kerfuffle here. So my position is he misstated the facts to me at least four times. I verify that with Wind River Pump Out, and that's the basis for my writing the report and uh, charging the two violations. We're back to circle the wagons for some of the weeks ago? Yeah, hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, no, no, so yeah, 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 I just. Obviously, you guys know everything. Well, almost, and that's what I was going to say. Thanks, Joe. Comfortable with Yeah, well, I just, I, my question is so, first of all, you can state your name for the bracket and that. Let me oh. people just fill in though quick. We're, we're at yep. the last meeting, um, we, we kind of left it back to the clock thing. Everything else we talked about, we had a pretty good. We were here discussion. for about 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, it was a pretty good discussion. And the last thing was the, the fog violation, which which that's where we're at now. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just left that you were going to go down the next day afterwards and check the stuff on the wall. And I guess there might be a discrepancy there. And I, that's why. That's why we're here. here. Yes. So that's where we're at. So. Okay. That kind of brings you up to speed a little bit, and, and now I guess you can state your name and, and address and whatever else, and then I, I, I'm not going to overstep my boundary. Right. Yeah. Then you can say your piece. And, so, okay. Matthew Story, uh, crust. Uh, looks like we're going to circle it again like we did two weeks ago um, when I thought we were just going to go and look at the logs. Uh, the fog violations and everything, regulations that we've talked about, I could self maintain, all right? The previous regime never enforced any logs being held. Is that my problem? Yes, it probably is. I should have read up on it that I should be keeping logs, but we then maintained ours and got rid of our own problem. Not having that, I felt like I was strong-armed, like I said last time in April when you came in the first time, and July the second time, to have a third-party company come in and do that, which I said was another added expense to the permitting that you guys have, you know, jacked up, violation prices that are jacked up, that we went at length the last time. We went over and over and over. Again. All right. Like I said, Death by a thousand guns. Joe eloquently went over, I guess, everything from soup to nuts on everything that's happened. Do I have a contract with Wind River? Yes. Do I have a contract with Wind River in Plymouth? Yes, but that doesn't matter because we're in situate. All right. Is my billing address differently for a situate? Yes, they bill my home address, which is on there. All right. Because I don't have a mailbox in situate. You know, like we said, Joe came in when he came in that Thursday and said, I'm Judge Judy and we're going to figure this out right now and this is what we're going to do. I'm not, I'm not here to be basically talk to you like a child and I'm not going to be all right you run a business my grease trap is maintained it has been maintained there was a clog down the street with rags I went out there and talked you were not there with the people that were pumping and they said it's actually down farther down for place that isn't I was not one of the affected okay 
There's not been any, there was no issue with my grease trap. There never has been an issue with my grease trap. Is my grease trap maintained and has it always been? Yes. Did I have records from it? No. So what do I do now? In Plymouth, I went down there and I went back and I went and found when my grease trap was actually cleaned out manually. Well, now I have to do that up here. Well, I don't have those manual, you know, written out logs now up here. I don't. All right. Now I have a third party, like I said, Wind River coming in and doing it. Added expense, an extra 400 bucks a year coming out of my pocket. Um, so there shouldn't be an issue. We left here last time saying it's a possible miscommunication. Let me go check. Drew came in last Thursday, you know, nine, ten days later and checked it out and said, yep, it's there. It's on the wall. You know. I think it, the reason we're backtracking a little bit is, you know, without, you know, trying to be upsetting, the, yes, you can create the logs, but there has to be an element of trust. Of course. Know, within what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm not going to go there and backdate anything yeah, now because that mean, doesn't like make if any you sense. You were saying that you had a contract, but this is not a contract, it's a proposal. You know, that's, that, the, that's undermining everything that's going on. Yeah, so it's, I it, think because I'm sitting there going, because the way that I was approached with everything, and I said this when Joe walked in the door in April, and I said it again in July, and I said it again in November, it felt like I was being strong-armed into getting a third party. And at that point, I need to find documentation from a third party because mine is not going to be acceptable to the town. If I went to Joe and said, it was pumped on this date, I don't think he would have sat there and said yes. It's, May it's, I it's, that well, 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 we had that it's, You were uninterrupted. It's, I can go uninterrupted, uh, Joe, thanks. It's, it's completely acceptable for him to maintain his grease trap on his own, but he still has to maintain records of how he disposed it. A licensed facility and that's where the still has to... And that's, and that's where I did not have Wind River take that's my five-gallon yeah. bucket that was taken it out. It actually was taken by a now defunct business that was taking it. It did my whole location. It did here. We put them in five-gallon buckets. They picked them up. All right. But it went left when... It went left when... You guys were... You were saying you had a contract. I just said, because I was under the understanding when I set everything up, I set some things up in Plymouth. I called this guy Isaiah Washington, which I then let Joe know about, which I guess he doesn't work there anymore, which then Joe found out as well, and then I found out about setting something up. If it didn't go follow through, I didn't follow through. But the fact is, is that I had situ maintained. I have Plymouth maintained. That's outside of this jurisdiction. Like I'm saying is, we're going, two weeks in a row we're coming in here talking about the same thing over and over again. Okay. All right. Let's Let's, let's go back. When we did the fog, didn't every, all the restaurants get a copy of the fog log? So when? Fog when when was it we did the fog. 2012? No, I think it was. Because last time it was 2012, 2013. So before I was in business, I should have gotten this log. What I'm trying to say, we can't go back retroactively and say this is when you should have been given a log. If you're going to be in business, there should be maybe. There's a, a welcome wagon. Here you go. Here's your grease trap log. I'm just keeping Wind River on because then it just keeps out the middleman. I don't have to worry well, about it. Before it, it, it takes the burden off of you and it, it puts it on them that they come down and do it. But I, I can't see revoking the fine at this point because of the discrepancy in the dates with Drew going down and then the dates changed. It just doesn't add up in right. my mind. But going forward, you've done the right thing and that's what it is. I'm, I'm just going to ask it going forward that you know if there's going to be new businesses coming in town, like you said in 2012, that there is things given out correctly to those businesses. You said that the people are being informed. Website, last time, last time I was in here, we asked about emails being sent out and if they're being sent out with new things going on regularly. And Joe said no, they so had it's not. It's almost like a new business package. It, it, I mean, I it, honestly, I'm not going to sit down when I buy a business. It's probably down on my list, which you said prioritize, which I understand. But there's a lot of other things that do go up there, and it's not what are my fog regulations for each town and how they're going to be applied in this situation. If it said, hey, Matt. Get your common evict license, get your food permit, and oh, you need to get that fog chart set up. Well, then that's done. Yeah. But it's not. And if it's not, if yeah, the, ju the previous jurisdiction that hadn't had that set up and wouldn't come in and enforce that, and now it's being enforced. It's, so we're going to sit here and point fingers and say, well, when I took over and it was Jennifer and Nellie and whoever, 
Well, they never enforced that correctly, and they never came in and asked for these sheets. It was, did you clean it? Yep, let's go downstairs and take a peek at it. We pop it open, they'd say, yep, this is within rights. I've done that numerous times with them. Yeah. All right? So, I'm gonna be held you know, accountable for the 200 bucks. Great, perfect. Now it's all set from now on. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys. They haven't made a decision. That, that, that was yeah. That was just, but that was just one opinion. You, there's, yeah, that's, a it's a formality. You, you right. It's a formality. Well, but I mean, you you know, from a business standpoint, a lot of these things are in to cover you too. I mean, it's not just where I, I don't want you to think we're picking on you. I don't think you're picking on. I don't think you do an inspection. You know, you have a violation. These are all to protect you. I mean, I was in a business where temp logs were done. And it saved the company a hundred thousand dollars from someone suing you because they got sick and they're gonna they're gonna go after. Uh, well, what I just I want to make sure is that things are done correct. Corrective action can be done and that's enforced correctly at the time of inspection. Things of that nature. That's what that's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. And if there's a corrective action that needs to be done, it should be done on the spot. And what I brought up last time, the death by a thousand cuts, that's still gonna keep happening around here. I mean, I'm gonna spend thousands of dollars a year, and situ would just be permitted and keep on moving forward. I guess I gotta accept that and swallow that pill. That's how it'll go. So yeah, I looked at the, the, the we were given a um, list of inspections. None of it seems overboard. Yeah. I mean, have you seen this? It, it's all public record. Um, most, of, most of the inspections and everything were routine. There was a couple of complaints about the dumpster. I don't think anybody was. There was like three inspections, inspections a year. That's what so normal is. Right. And then so you're three, every six outage, months, it'll be three years. The, the, the health board's going to come by if there's a power outage to make sure refrigeration and everything's done. And if, we, if the power outage was gone for so long, things have to be thrown out. And the town, it's Which, a good thing for like the citizens did. of the town. They make sure that stuff's disposed of. We talked about this last time. Yeah. Drew came in in October and I. We didn't have power for a day. What did I do? I moved everything to Plymouth because I could just throw everything in my truck and bring it down. That was going to be perishable. I mean, those are things that are, that's common sense stuff. This is common sense. I common get, sense, I corrective action. Sour, like, death by a thousand cuts, I get your statement, but when I look uh -oh. at that, it says everything there is, is pretty black and white. It's, it's I, I'm going to say, I'm sour with the public permitting. Am I sour about the violations? That's how you guys are going to base it off of. That's fine. I get it. You know, is my grease trap clean? Yep. Is it, are we going to be able to eat dinner off of it? Yes. I is everything else fine? A simple thing on the wall. There is a simple thing down. on the wall. I know it, but it fell down. The dates are different. No, it's, I, no, nobody's ever touched it. It's just yeah. the fact is, is that it's posted. And it's the correct. Sticky tape fell down. It fell down behind something. It like is where it is. Letters in the post office that they get found forty years later. This comes up. The boom, the dates are on there. Everything's good. You could have ripped that fine up and called it a day. But it, it just doesn't seem that way in my mind. It, it's, it's so we have a signed contract with Wind River. You going to call? We could get that all figured out while we're right here. Well, don't you have to submit it, a copy of it? We, we never received. I'm going to make the motion to move to deny the owner's appeal request of the fog violation fee for press food establishment and the owner must pay the fog violation fee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hi, good evening. I'm actually John Cavanaugh from Cavanaugh Consulting. Can I get the cards to the Thank you. Can you just state your name? Sure. Uh, again, John Cavanaro from Cavanaro Consulting in Norwell. I'm a civil engineer here representing Tom McNulty, the owner of 585 Hadley Road. And we've applied for an irrigation well permit to um, service a single family dwelling at Hadley Road. It is cited uh, within all the allowable setbacks. And with respect to the septic system, it's over 100 feet. The septic system's in the front yard. The well will be in the backyard. It will be uh, about 100 feet at least from either property line. We're outside of the flood zone that's mapped graphically. 
Uh, it's actually about three feet plus higher than the um, elevation of the flood, but it's mapped much closer. So we're staying outside of that as well. We're about 130 feet from the nearest adjacent wetland, which is on site, uh, behind a grove of trees and a lawn area. The one thing that we are within proximity to is the golf course property line. Heatherly Golf Course is uh, about 115 feet to the nearest boundary. Your regulations uh, state that any golf course within 500 feet shall be noted uh, on the plan. So we're, we're doing that. Um, we want to make very clear that the actual golf course surface, the playing surface, is well over 500 feet from where the proposed well is going to be sited. Between the property and the playing surface, there's a large wetland area and a heavily wooded section uh, of the golf course. So the, the, the playing surface, if you're familiar with this area, this is Hadley Road, Gannett Road. There's a golf cart pass that comes across Gannett Road. That's a couple of abutters up, and then it sweeps by the wetland, and then it comes back towards where the tennis courts are, which is further down Hadley Road. So we're here because uh, we're seeking whatever relief we need to have the irrigation well within 500 feet of a golf course. Yeah, I like your plan. That's a well-represented plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice job on it. Uh, I don't think that's a, a, a good example for another uh, survey of engineers that come through the work. Uh, yeah. In light of what you've said, No, I mean, it's, it is what it is. There's, you know, I mean, there's only so much you can do. And again, he's, he's got it all marked out. He knows what he's doing. They're here asking permission to do it the right way. And Right, but it's not like this uh, golf course is about right up to that. We right. have exactly, yeah, it's, exactly. It, it, it's, it's, like it's, said, it's, feet away, it's the boundary so line that hits it, yeah. The course itself. Right. right. Yeah. So we just want yeah, to make stated yeah. my notes for if there's another one. Yeah. That's the reason for the variance. Yes. You have to be very careful about granting variances. Understood. It, it sets a question. Yeah. yeah. So conservation also signs the permits for the wells. Yeah. So we spoke to conservation, and, you, and they, you just might have to file the conservation before you dig, just because it's near the wetlands. So just to let you know, um, after you get your perm, after you get, she's probably gonna put something in. Okay, we're we're outside of the jurisdiction. And that's an issue for yeah. them. We'll right. deal yeah, with that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just check with okay. her. She sure. Said it, no, she just must have to file something with her. Sure. Okay. Motions for. Oh, yeah. I read off the teleprompter. We forgot to print them out. No. That's all right. Okay. That's right. Oh, you, yeah. Well, no, you can just use that. You can use it off of that. That's what he's requesting. That's the request. All right. Yeah, I'm going to say make a motion to approve the variance for uh, irrigation valve for 585 Hadley Road with the uh, 500 foot setback on the golf course. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Discuss and vote. Accepted design hearing. Eight Shadwell. Danger Jr. representing homeowner request for insulation of septic system requiring local upgrades and variances. Hi, uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you tonight? Good. All right, I'm Dana Jr. And uh, this is the plan. Have you seen this plan yet? No? Uh, this is the first time we have. Ah, okay. All right, so it's been reviewed a couple yeah. times here. Um, probably seen a little loose already. Um, so here we have. Shadwell Road with the existing 
three bedroom dwelling and the street out here. Right now the system is in front of the house. It's failed. Uh, the house is under agreement to be sold. Uh, we did perk tests as you can see right here and here. Holes one and two. Um, they yielded a bit of a high groundwater table and the, the good perkable material was in the groundwater table. So we had to do a sieve analysis instead of actually pouring the water. And that requires the first variance, uh, very to allow sieve analysis in place of perk test. All right. So we got um, granule analysis done by Briggs Engineering. They gave us the uh, soil reports back. Based on that, we designed a 24 chamber field right here, three rows of eight. Um, it needs to be elevated a bit. So we have a, a new, we're going to crush and pump the existing tank, remove all the bad material down to the good material, uh, put in a 1500 gallon tank that goes into a 1000 gallon pump chamber and it gets pumped up about two feet to the, to the final system. I put a rubber barrier around the whole thing uh, because we're only 10 feet from the house. The front part of the house is a crawl space, but the back part of the house is uh, finished. All right. So it was supposed to be 20 feet to the house, but we can only make 10 feet to the house. Um, I was able to get 10 feet to the property line, which is required, and 10 feet to the street line, which is required. So the second variance is very to allow less than, excuse me, I, I did them backwards. Uh, I just talked about the third one. Very to allow 10 feet instead of 20 feet uh, required between the SAS and the crawl space. All right, so, so that's that one right there, 10 feet instead of 20 feet. But again, I have a, a rubber barrier there also to help that. Uh, the third variance, which is number two here, is the water line. You can see right here is an existing water line. So this is a paved driveway right here, um, and the water line actually comes right into the corner of the house. We can't bring it into the garage. We have to bring it into the house. Um, so, so there's only going to be about two feet between the tank and the water line, and there's supposed to be 10 feet. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to disconnect the water, sleeve it, which is a common practice with a, a, a four-inch PVC Schedule 40, and uh, reconnect it but it will only be two feet from the tank. It'll be more than 10 feet from the, from the system, from the SAS, anyway. Um, and these are monolithic tanks, so shouldn't be any leak in or anything like that anyway. So uh, those are the three variances that I'm here for um, that I'm requesting on behalf of the, the is, that, is there any reason why I need to go out and back out? Yes, uh, well, like I said, right now everything's out front. Mm -hmm. The, system, the, the sewer pipe comes out, out the front, mm -hmm. and the crawl space is the workable area inside. This is all finished in back. So would, we would have been having a, uh, a, a pipe come through the finished space, all right? Uh, the other thing is this gets lower out here, mm -hmm. and I believe the, the groundwater table would have been a bit higher, although I didn't dig anything out here, mm -hmm. all right? I stuck with... What's in the What's in the front? Cameron is here, right? Til Tilden is here. Oh, Tilden. Tilden. I forget the name of the other one right here. Turner. Right here. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. It uh, actually Turner's over here, right? Yeah, Turner is here. Shadow goes down. And then down. Trying okay. To the name of that road. Is it? Ben Tilden. Shadow. Shadow. Okay. Think, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. a lot well, of you'd know better than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of water behind. Water behind. Yeah, yeah. And then this goes over the park. Right. I believe that's why the original system was put on the front. Yeah. Oh. The higher water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And conservation um, right. approved it, but that's what they said. There's a lot of water behind in yeah. the back. Okay. So that's why they understand the variances. Right. 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 Got to ask him. I see a lot of open space. Yeah, no, yeah, no it's a good, sense. good question. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. So I, I, that was my only question. I think everything was done well. You squeezed the water line. You got the rubber uh, membrane in. Um, experiences were repressed uh, all the time. So it's not a big deal. It's a distant structure. Uh, we want to do the best we can. That's all. So uh, yeah, nope, yep. I, I, I don't have a problem. With that.
Yeah, the family. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could go around. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he has it already. Okay, okay, so we'll go around. Uh, it's flat out back. It's, it's, it's yeah. It is, so. I've and I've also, um, right now, the pipe comes out right across the floor of the crawl space, and we're going to bring it up about two feet. So it's going to kind of go through the middle of the of the crawl space mm -hmm. so that the tanks aren't too, too deep. You want to make them as shallow as you can. Yeah, yep. you can let them up. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no worries. No, I, like I said, it just looked like a lot of space there and it had a little bit of reason. I think right, yeah, yeah. Up with some major landscaping back there or pool. Yeah, that's or right. Or yeah, sure. no. it was this way. I know the frog ponds go all around. Yeah. 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 Glad you, yeah. glad you <laughs> had that personal experience. Too. <laughs> <laughs> like, it helped me out with it, explaining it. Yeah. I, I, um, I have no further questions. No, do we, no. Have, we don't have a motion, right? Yeah, do you go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you guys are all set there. Yeah. Uh, move to approve the septic repair plan with the following upgrades requested. Number one, request reduction from the required 20 foot to 10 foot between the SAS and the crawl space. Uh, number two, request reduction required 10 feet to 2 feet and setback between the water supply line and the septic tank. Number three, request sieve analysis in place for perk test. This is also pending conservation commission approval and engineers satisfactory revisions to the plan to address the Board of Health administrative review comments. Which I think have been done yep. already. Yeah. So okay. so All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All, All right. right. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Appreciate septic systems coming up in compliance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All, yeah, all yeah, benefits yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. luck with the sale. Yeah. Discuss and vote homeowners application number five for community yeah. septic management yeah. program CSMP septic development third installer quote. They're looking for twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah. For the this, is our, yeah. Yeah. this is our application number five um, that has a failed system. So they're looking um, to put in a new system. I think it's going to be a little bit older. It's going to be, it looks like it might be a good system in that area, so it might be over the 25000 but he's still working on getting some estimates, so we'll have to come back. But right now, um, you need to approve 25000 for the, for the beginning part, and then we'll come back with the quotes. But just FYI, it might be more. Okay. So do we have a, just to make a motion? Just to make a motion to... Yeah, just make a motion to approve that right. application number five. Number five. For right, 25000 Make a motion to approve homeowner application number five for community septic management program, um, otherwise known as CSMP. Um, and we'll get the three installer quotes, so that's my motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, directed report. Okay, so let's see. Bump, bump, bump. For January 27th, we have four new septic plans under 45 day review period. We have no plans waiting to be revised under the septic plan review that have gone out, so that's good. We have 16 sets of plans waiting for engineering revisions, five sets of plans waiting for CONCOM review, five as-built for new private wells we're waiting on, 13 as-built for septic systems that have been installed, and we have 17 failed systems currently. We are still giving out flu shots on Wednesdays and Thursday mornings at the, ofi uh, at the office. It's still not too late to get your flu shot. There is a lot of noise in the news about the coronavirus. It does not come from, what is it, Mexico? <laughs> so the, we do have five uh, confirmed cases in the U.S. It is spread human to human. It is droplets, sneezing. Right now, there are no real major concerns in the United States. That's what CDC is saying. What we can do, and we always encourage people to do, is use proper hygiene, proper etiquette. If you do have to sneeze, make sure you sneeze into your arm or your elbow. If you do sneeze into your hands, make sure you wash your hands. A couple of versions of happy birthday while you're doing soapy water is a great uh, way to remember how long you should be washing your hands for. If you do have any of the bacterial sprays, a great thing to do is do your doorknobs at home. We never clean our doorknobs. It's things that 
people touch on a regular basis. The virus can survive 24 to 48 hours on a metal object. Is that so, coronavirus or any virus? Just about any virus will be able to survive that long. That's why it's so important to wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. The other item or the other thing that people should always be cautious about is how many times do you just scratch your eye or, or, or touch your mouth or anything like that. That's all another way where any virus that is on your hands now it's on your eye, that's a way for it to infiltrate your system and that's a way for you to get it. So we really encourage everybody, if you haven't got your flu shot yet, get it. If you still get the flu, it makes the recovery that much easier. Uh, we can't guarantee that you're never going to get the flu if you get the flu shot. But it's really, really important, especially if you're a caregiver to an elderly person or to a child under the age of five years old, it's very important that you get the flu shot. I don't want to downplay this either, but does the flu shot work for the coronavirus? No. Not it's not one of the, yeah. They're in the process of trying. It's kind of like the H1N1 virus that we had back in 2008, 2009. It was a new mutant that came out. They haven't had a chance to even actually, you know, figure out how it transmits. They know this transmits person to person right now. They know it's through droplets. They don't know if there's any other way it could be transmitted, but they're still in the very beginning stages of investigating it. So we just tell people, be careful if you're out in public, cover your mouth, always wash your hands, and don't be afraid to you know, wipe down your cell phone with any type of antibacterial wipes, your computer keys, um, your steering wheel on your car, anything that your hand touches on a regular basis that might be able to maintain the life of a virus for a while. You want to make sure you give it a wipe down. Um, and we are still busy out there. We are still getting a lot of uh, people coming in out doing applications for perk tests. We are getting ready to start planning for our serve safe food course that we're going to be running in the spring once the marine center opens up we're going to get that information out to all of the restaurant owners we are currently running a did we do was that today next monday, next monday. The, the, part of the, the discussion we had earlier yep. that goes out by email yep to all restaurant next owners. Monday, yep. yeah and they're all on email there's no yep. everybody's electrified yes so okay. that's where we are with that and uh I think that's about it. And we have POs that have to be done. Bacchus Tavern. Bacchus Tavern is running. I did. I haven't done it for a while. I did leave in front of each one of you the. Um, it's a draft of the annual report from the Board of Health. It's about 98.8 percent complete. It's not due till February 10th. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys a chance to take a look at it if you have any additions, corrections, subtractions, anything you want to put on it, don't hesitate. It's your report. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. See, see how she did that? Right into her, right into her elbow. I saw that. We should, we should be putting that on TV right now. <laughs> Don't cut. <laughs> How long is that? Two hours. It's usually wow. about two hours because there's usually about 40 people there. Yeah. And they have two lines, like because you have to do practical though. Right. And that's the state thing, so somebody could take that to a, if they worked in multiple restaurants. Yes. Uh, or left. That's. Which no one would want to, but if they happen to. That's the beautiful thing about the serve safe course, too. It, it, it goes with you. That's good yep. in all New England states. Even Rhode Island and oh, it's good. So it's regional. Yeah, it's regional. Okay, make a motion to adjourn. Second. All there. Aye. That's the one. That's the one we were talking about a draft.